So ladies and gentlemen, I was just telling you that uh, the MC is the fuel of uh, the entire day's event. So if you all agree with me, uh, and you also agree that you've been under tremendous peer pressure to watch the IPL matches going on, you please give yourself a big round of applause. If you agree that you're watching these IPL matches under peer pressure, because honestly speaking, I don't understand why we watch them because we do not belong to any team and no team belongs to us entirely. Yeah? So if you agree with me, if you echo what I'm saying, then please, oh, yes, you have to be louder, sir. You have to be louder if you agree. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, here we start off all prepped up, all set to go for the post-lunch session on World Auto Forum Summit 2017. Okay, and to begin with, it's an absolutely new concept which is here before me. Gone are the days when uh, static images were prevalent. Nowadays, people see them in cinemas, in dealerships and everywhere. But that doesn't excite or entice them anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Rather, they want something more mobile, something more digital, and that's the start of a new era. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Rafiq from Newson Digital, who's been a retail banker for 15 years and worked with places like HSBC and Citibank and many more. He's uh, diversified in digital signages and experience solutions. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Rafiq. Please put your hands together to welcome him. <laughs> welcome, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I haven't had uh, such a great introduction for a long time, so thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, so before I start this, uh, a lot of people have asked me the same question as to Retail banking and, and digital signage, what the hell is there in common? Uh, and it's very interesting because uh, it was in retail banking that I actually came to know about a concept called digital signage. When, when the branches were struggling to try and connect to customers to see how relevant information can be given to customers at the point of purchase and you know the branches were filled with posters, there seemed to be a technology wherein slowly you can actually start having dynamic and interesting content that's being shown out there uh, to customers and all this being centrally managed and monitored and that's, that's how the transition came in. Uh, now on to, uh, to today's presentation. You know, it's very interesting because when, when, when I came in and actually made this presentation yesterday, uh, the flow was very different and when I sat a couple of hours in the room today, uh, I, I was pretty shocked uh, and at the same time, you know, very interested in the kind of reactions that I, I received from, from veterans in the industry. You know, uh, somebody actually told me that uh, I don't think the auto, you know, the showroom is going to exist anymore. Uh, somebody else told me that hey, it's more important that we actually ensure that the customer is very happy even before he comes into the store because you know he is already learned and he understands everything and he knows much more than the salesman when he actually walks into the store and I wondered what the hell do I do with my products and services because all these are store oriented and showroom oriented right but but let's not forget uh, when the dot-com boom happened and and the e-com giants came in a lot of experts out there said that brick and mortar is finished uh, it's not going to be there anymore but I'm sure that all of us who go out there for the weekend shopping suddenly realize that uh, brick and mortar very much exists. And, and if you look at the plans for, for, for the retailers, and we do a lot of work for retailers, they have very ambitious plans. But what is more important is how do you connect the brick and mortar versus the social media, versus the digital world? And I think that's where we kind of fall. So I personally, you know, when I, when I start buying a car, I'm pretty excited about buying a car. You know? But you get very excited about which brand to buy. So that's the first question you, ask, you start asking yourself. The next question is, you know, which variant? You know, there are A variants, B variants, C, D, X, Y, Z. Now, after that, you said, which color do I do? You know, what are the features that I have to go for? You know, what are the reviews? What do people think? It's not about what I think. Now, it's about what my neighbor thinks. It's about what my friend thinks. It's about what my cousin thinks, et cetera, et cetera, right? 
but i still need to walk into the store out there i still need to walk into the showroom out there because i am buying a car or am i am buying a bike so i need to feel it i need to see it it may look great on the web but finally when you go now there you need to see it feel it touch it get a feel of it now how do i extend this experience at the showroom you know you have a fantastic experience on the web out there how do you get the same experience out there in the showroom so when the customer comes in he is not disappointed but on the contrary so for a brand you know somebody like you i'm sure one of your biggest concerns are how do i ensure consistent communication i have something there that's on the social media i have something there on my websites and now when he walks into the showroom is it something that he is echoing is something that's being shown out there being echoed in my showroom becomes a, a question mark how do my offers be displayed you know when i when i walked into a number of stores you know we see that a lot of posters are being put there and a lot of them are archaic you know you've launched a brand and uh, if you go into the your showroom the poster is about xy brand that is not even present today so how do you make it relevant how do i create more engagement when i walk in you know my personal experience while buying a car i i i walk into the you know to the showroom and i talk to the guy and i ask him uh, you know what's the difference between these two and 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 fair enough i think most of the by 9 out of 10 they just don't know they just don't know enough and how do i ensure that when the customer walks in there is some form where he is engaged and the information that's passed to him is relevant and right effectively you need to increase your hit rate so when i walk into a store you know you need to ensure that when i walk in i walk out with something you know i probably come out buying car x or car y you know that's 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 your objective and educate the customer so whatever system that you plan needs to be first of all easily manageable right so you you run uh, a business that has multiple stores that have multiple locations that have multiple languages that have multiple products right now this should be manageable and in some form it should be manageable centrally it has to be flexible in the sense that you cannot give a solution where you know i say that this is the box that i give you and that's about it right so you need flexibility for this the results need to be monitored so if you show something out there you know how is it related to my sale can i link it to an roi in some form if i run a particular campaign and it's shown in the branch or it's shown in the showroom is there some form of a link that's there is there something i need to communicate out there so it needs to be monitored it needs to be scalable i start with a store i do a pilot in five stores and 10 stores now i need to roll it out in those 200 300 500 5000 stores so it needs to be scalable in india everything needs to be affordable right so you need the best for this much and i'm sure you know you are facing the same thing i need the best car i need it with you know everything that's possibly available but i need it at you know 100 rupees right so the same challenge exists with us as well how do you get that done how do i leverage the changing technology platforms you know somebody comes and says no mine works on windows and the other guy comes and says no android the third guy comes and says no it's linux the fourth guy comes and says no it's chrome and it's not stopping there right it's going to move on so how do i have a system that can actually take this into account while i grow most importantly i think one of the biggest things that i heard this morning a lot of my colleagues and friends talk about here is about data it's about big data it's about intelligence it's about ai it's about machine learning in the end this needs to translate back and it has to in some form be put to the customer have an experience where i'm actually walking to the store and then you know you actually recognize me and welcome me when i come and i'm going to feel great right or i've searched the web and i've looked for your car so you know i've looked for your car so when i come into the store effectively you're telling him hey thank you this is what you're looking for here is a special offer for you it makes it relevant so we at new sign basically just do that so our multiple uh, platform solutions strive to enhance the experience the digital experience of the customers in store you know making it relevant and value adding to customers and in some form providing business enhanced roi so that's what we are in so typically if you look at uh, any digital signage or digital uh, experience solution what is key is the central content management system that 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 we say now this is the heart of the system you need to have a robust content management system 
wherein you can have different kinds of media that's sitting in it, wherein you can actually integrate with different uh, CRM systems or eCRM systems, the social media, right? And then you can monitor, manage, and distribute content centrally pre-planned for a whole season. Now, the CMS then has to be flexible to support different varied platforms, as I had mentioned earlier. Now, in a showroom, you can have a normal small screen, right? Or you can have these large, beautiful looking, the 86 inch screens, the 101 inch screens, the dynamic screens. You can have digital kiosks that are, that are managed, right? You can have video walls, which is basically a, a whole batch of tens of screens that are put together to give you that beautiful digital canvas. You can have LEDs, which are indoor LEDs and outdoor LEDs. It really doesn't matter. Now, tomorrow you can look at something else, right? But most importantly, all these will be managed centrally from a point. Now, this will integrate to show relevant data to the customer. It's not about just showing any content. It's showing about relevant content to the customer to entice him to ensure that you can actually convert him, right? So I'd just like to share with you a couple of solutions that, that, that's, that's possibly that, uh, relevant to you and that you can think of. And this is just called, we call it a, a configurator, right? So, so when somebody walks into the store and you know, uh, your salespeople have tabs or there are tabs that are, uh, are there uh, in the showrooms, you walk in, the customer is given a tab, he can start browsing the tab to look at which product he wants, the features he wants, et cetera, et cetera. And once he's done that, if he likes a particular product, now all he has to do is just fling it to a much larger format. And there you have this beautiful 86 or a 96 inch screen that actually shows in high resolution content about your product. Now that could create a trigger in his mind about the product. Once this is pushed in, if he wants to look at something else, there's something called the unfling. So you unfling it back and then you refling into another, another screen. So, so this we call it the configurator. Now you also have a scenario where a customer would like to see how does an accessory look in the car that I'm planning to buy, right? And you have hundreds of accessories for your vehicles. How will my car look? Uh, you cannot physically place these cars in your showroom, right? So here you have a huge or larger than life vehicle that's there on your screen and the customer can then choose different accessories that are possible, push it around the screen, see how the car looks like, so then it can drive his decision to actually buy a particular accessory or not. The next one is the digital, uh, digital pedestals. You know, I've, uh, I don't know how, of, how many of you have seen this, but when, when you walk into a store, you have this beautiful looking car that costs you lakhs. And beside it, you actually have a stand with a paper. And I've seen this. Have any of you seen this? I'm not offending any, <laughs> any of the, the auto experts out here, right? So it's a printout that's kept out there, right? And the printout is again archaic. Okay, you suddenly see that the information that's there is not really pertaining to the car that's being displayed. So you ask the guy, uh, is this the feature? And he says, sorry, sir, you know, the, the, the print is, uh, I forgot to take it, right? So. What the digital pedestal basically does, it, does, it, it gives the store manager the, the uh, flexibility to start showing content based on the vehicle that's there, right? Now, we also have taken into consideration a lot of physical issues. You cannot have a wire that runs across the showroom, right? Now that, that's not gonna work. You should have something, a product, where you can actually move because your cars never are there in the exact same spot every day, right? The vehicles keep moving within a store, right? So this particular product actually has battery backup in it. It has the player in it. It has the Wi-Fi in it. The content is sitting in it, right? And all the staff has to do is actually take this physically out there, place it in front of the car. He then has a complete choice of which car to choose, which model to choose, so he can choose it. And then the relevant content is placed. Now tomorrow he takes this particular pedestal, puts it to the next car. He can change it automatically. What is more important is the information that rests on this, again, is centrally managed. So the central marketing department or, or you know, whoever is concerned on managing the content can decide as to what content actually sits on these pedestals. Um, the next we call are the digital promo boards. 
what really entices people are I see a lot of information that's on the web now you see a car on the web you see it on an 86 or on a 92 inch ultra HD screen that has 4k resolution that has 500 nits uh, brightness it is going to look cool <laughs> right and what you want to tell the customers is exactly that hey listen you are buying a product you need to see it in the best possible avatar as possible right okay so these you know along with our partners we work a lot with with with, with LG and with the most leading technology now you can make sure that when the customer walks into your store the experience that he gets is fantastic uh, the next one we call it a, a digital status board and this is again for the service right all of us give our cars for servicing and many a times you know you don't know what the status of your cars are you know you go give the car for your servicing and then you're sitting out there and every other half hour you walk into the guy and he says my car ready and the guy says sir it's on the ramp next half hour you walk in sir my car ready and no sir the wheel is being fixed right so you have absolutely no idea about where your car is you have the information it is all sitting there in your database you need to ensure that this is actually shown out there to the customer so as he's watching his IPL for example on a screen at the same time you intersperse it with the status of uh, his vehicle to say that Mr. X your vehicle will be received in the next 10 minutes or in the next 15 minutes right so it just ensures that the customer is also happy and he's also engaged and at the same time you are proactively communicating to the customer virtual reality is, is, is into and that I think is going to be the next uh, phase uh, I was talking to one of my colleagues here and then you know he said that I think you know I, I've in our stores, digital reality doesn't work. We've tried it, but virtual reality is something that I'd, I'd, I'd like to try. And, and, I, and I agree with him. How many times can you actually look at a model concept car that is just launched in the auto show in New York and bring it out here and keep it for customers to see? You cannot. But would you like to give that experience to customers? Yes, probably. Right? So with VR, you can actually make that happen. And believe me, uh, if VR is done well, it is extremely exciting it's extremely engaging and what you can also do along with VR is that you're not just showing the car you can intersperse it with indirect messaging to your customer so everywhere your brand is being re-emphasized so you sit in the car if it is X brand if it is Ford if it is a Mercedes or Suzuki whatever it is it's shown the guy turns you know you have the both there so again you are indirectly influencing the customer and you can actually give him a real life experience right so that is VR and again uh, I'd like to hope that the, the experts in this room at this point of time are, are would be wrong uh, in saying that the, the store is going to be over and the showroom is going to be over we all hope that it continues for a long period of time but I think the shape and, and the format of these stores are definitely going to change right as banking changed from large branches to digital stores and you also see now retail that is actually changing into di digital stores you probably start looking at a transition where you have a digital car showroom where you really don't have a car you don't have the physical car you actually have digital kiosks you have screens you have LEDs customers are coming in there they are looking at it they are browsing through the, in the information they are comparing cars, they are comparing features and they are doing everything and in the end they are actually buying a car in a store where there really isn't uh, a, a, a car. So that's where we are uh, uh, transiting and just the last point is that to influence your customer before he comes in apart from social media I think digital OH is going a very very long way and uh, if you see now you know any airport that you get into, any bus station that you get into. Uh, you have digital OH, any mall you get into, you, any elevator you get into, you have digital OH and that's another huge area I think where auto can leverage upon uh, our technology. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you.